Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. He's a level three whiskey sommelier. He's a, uh, I don't know, mooch, I guess. Aspirations of moochiness. Yes. I've been a, I've been a non mooch for a long time. It's. We even saw your spirit animal outside. It's high time that I commune with my great whiskey spirit eagle. If we and tried figure to out what the hell, because my powers have been waning as of. If we tried to put your necklace on you right now, would it just like? Not like it'd be like polarized magnets. I think something would plink against the window. Oh, okay. <laughs> we don't want that. Pink. <laughs> window, okay. Window plinks. This is from. Let me pour it first. This is from Matthew Zittrick. Matthew Zittrick. <laughs> the Matthew Zittrick. Yes. Oh. Oh. Hold on. Stretch out the hammy. Who may I? Who may Stretch out have a bigger collection than ours. <laughs> Matthew the Trick, you magnificent bastard! Yeah. Okay. What, what did Matthew send here? So Zitrick William Lawson sent William Lawson's blended Scotch. Yeah, for now. I think if I'm not mistaken, Bacardi owns this brand now. Mm -hmm. So the company dates back to 1800s, but uh, and it's been trading hands. And in the 60s, it was revived. They changed the name. The, the company owns Macduff. So most of the base of this blend, in theory, comes from the Macduff Distillery. And then um, this company also releases Glendeverin as their single malt, which you remember is that one that has that really brilliantly tinted blue bottle. This is amazing content that would be even more amazing three quarters of the way into the episode. Anyway, it's a blended scotch. Right. And it's really exploding in popularity right now. Uh, oh, musty also honeysuckle. Also exploding out of the, the glass here. It really is. Not candy sweet, floral sweet. <laughs> that was like... Fruity sweet. That was like such a newscaster transition. Right. <laughs> like you have the guy on the street going, Here's, it's Dave. exploding out of this. It's Dave. also exploding out of the glass, Dave. Here's the thing. <laughs> I've tried to modify and tweak and adjust and evolve this show <laughs> scores of times. Yeah. And I have like sheets of paper next to the camera. Yeah, it doesn't work. And the groove inertia. We, it's so thoroughly just, just the, it's autopilot. No matter what I try and tweak and adjust, yeah. completely gets ignored. So this, I what you're talking help. about, I can't help what it. you're talking about, you know, off camera, it's like, hey, Daniel, you know, maybe shut the fuck up for a while while we nose and taste the whiskey, and then you can go into that, and then no. you go in the notes. Doesn't happen. I like so having I context. Try to transition so intentionally and aggressively into what's going on in the glass, <laughs> and then we can expand upon that, which I think would be a good change. The problem it will is, never happen. It will never happen. <laughs> The problem is I prefer, my preference is context for what I'm drinking. Other people prefer to start blind, which I do. I'll, just, I'll start blind as well, but I much prefer to have context for what I'm drinking. Yeah, lovely. I'm so glad you're satisfied. I'm so glad all of us could be here for you to have my little moment. Your preferences met. Okay, so this is not fruity, floral, sugary sweetness on the nose. That uh, organic sour, is that peatiness? What is this? No, I don't think there's any peat in this. What is that organic kind of a sour earthy note that I'm getting? It actually smells yeasty. Okay. Like like when a tank is fermenting. Right. Like that kind of bready, yeasty, rich, dense. On the nose, this jumps out of the glass. On the taste, those notes, but watered down. Yeah. You absolutely get this is a 40% whiskey. They took this probably past where you're going to get the most uh, character out of these various flavors. Yeah, it does fall a little thin at the end and slightly watery in the yeah. aftertaste. It just slides down the window. But I tell you, plinks. Slides. There's down the nothing window. sharp about it. No, no, no. Right, like if we're talking budget blends. Right. There's nothing aggressive or anything to struggle with on this whiskey. I will say this: if you're looking for a like a budget blend that's not going to be sharp and aggressive and pointy but also isn't going to be just, you know, here's some generic sweetness, have fun. Right. This isn't generic sweetness. This is a different uh, different path that they took on these flavors. And you say like yeasty, mm -hmm. uh, usually with the, you know, cheap um, budget blends and stuff, you're, they're just gonna go for some sweetness. But I think it's relatively rare to have something at 40% in yeah. the budget category that isn't just going for a mass market sweet note that they know a lot of people are gonna like. Not, not bad. I would not have a problem with this being my budget blend that I go to at the, towards the end of the night when we're yeah. just having some more whiskey, but my yeah. palate's blowing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I like well that. done. All right. Thank you, Matthew. 
What do we got here? We got the uh, we got the Eddie Barnes. Eddie Barnes. I want to see someone in The Walking Dead realize they can go to any distillery or barrel house and drink right. from any and all barrels there. If you were in that situation, which one would you choose to make your new home? I would go with Maker's Mark because it's my only chance to try single barrel makers. I have had this thought. I have watching. never thought of that. Are you kidding me? That's the first time it occurred to me. No, no, no. So the whole world is collapsed, but right. these barrels are sitting there with whiskey. No, I. I it's, that's like the first thought I have anytime I watch a new zombie-esque movie or TV show. It's like, what are you doing with like the barbed wire and the sticks? Like, go find the most amazing, you know, Lamborghinis and yeah. whiskeys and like private jets. Wow. And figure out how to read the manual and fly guys. Plane, <laughs> helicopters, whatever the hell. I understand you have to get there and fight hordes of zombies, but you know it's something, totally worth something it. Something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I would say the design of a whiskey rickhouse is pretty defensible. A lot of just brick and tall buildings and window access and yeah rails and yeah and some of them are pretty remote too so you don't necessarily have to be in like the thick of it yeah right I love that idea and then there's nobody else so you wouldn't have to be worried about like totally irresponsible if there's other people on planet Earth yeah like, you could get drunk <laughs> and in a tank yeah <laughs> right and roll over everything. <laughs> In an empty planet. That's the only only time that's acceptable. There's nothing else on planet Earth. <laughs> that would be amazing. All right. Dallas Stoltz. Does anybody know who or what uh, kind of still they're using at Crowded Barrel? I know they're sourcing their whiskey for the moment. I'm mm -hmm. making stuff too, but yeah. I'm really looking forward to what brand they may be using, even a company that makes something similar. Thank you. So what is this? Minotaur? So right now, Deb's running a Minnetonka... 100 liter electric pot still a copper with a copper column. It's weak. And we're, it's, yes, 26 gallons. So uh, we're about to add some to that so we can run them all simultaneously and up. And we're also looking into a 100, 200 gallon pot still. The goal is every time we do a run. Every time we do a heart run. Right. We fill a barrel. We fill a barrel. So That's we, the goal. It's so expensive. It's, that's going to be a large still. I mean, we're talking right. probably closer to 500 gallons still in order to fill one barrel per heart run. Yeah, and those things ain't cheap. So Well, I mean, and by 100 gallon, I mean, you got to start with a stripping run that takes a 500 gallon down to like 200, 300, and then you start with a heart, then you have a heart cut, right. maybe you can fill a barrel. So in addition so, to that, we do have some tiny stills that are just doing a little experimental stuff. Yeah, those are like 10 gallon batch stills that we're using to test recipes and mashes and things like that. Yeah, not that you should go looking into that because it's the wrong channel to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> but All it's good right. information. So this was uh, pleasant surprise. Pleasant surprise, especially at this proof, and what I'm assuming is the budget price point. Mm -hmm. I am glad to see that there are budget options that aren't going for just a generic sweetness. That's like, oh yeah, blended, whatever, metallic finish. No, 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 no. no. There's nice notes, earthy, strong sour sourdough, some maltiness in there. I dig it. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.